Hi everyone and welcome back for the next episode in our advanced dialogue tutorial series. In the last episode we managed to get our dialogue tree working with a simple dialogue system uh, showing different lines of dialogue and then ending that dialogue. What we're looking at today now is going for the advanced part, making it so you can ask a question to the player and display a series of responses. So for that we need to make a new task similar to what we've done for these ones here. So go up to new task up the top and choose BT task blueprint base. Immediately minimize this, go into your content explorer and rename it to ask question. <clears throat> In your ask question task we need a couple of variables. First we need a blackboard reference to our dialog UI. So limit dialog I do bb or blackboard underscore dialog UI and the variable type is blackboard key selector and make it instance editable. Next we need to store the response that the player is going to leave behind. So go bb underscore response and again that would be a blackboard key selector and it will be editable as well. The next two variables will relate to the question that's being asked. So the first thing we need is the question. And that's going to be a piece of text. So change the variable type to text. Add another variable. And this will be responses. And this will be a list, an array of all the different responses that the question could offer. So all the multiple choice options. This will be an array. So choose the little pill icon here and change it to the array icon. Click compile. Um, we want to make both of these editable, so so all your eyeballs should be shown. So if I go to my dialog tree, and rather than end the dialog, we are going to ask a question. Now over on the right hand side, you can see my Backboard dialog UI has been set to a dialog widget, which is correct. My response hasn't been set to a correct one yet. Here's where I'll type in the question, and here are the different responses I could have. So the question could be, what is your favourite colour? And we could have the first response be red, blue, green and then finally yellow okay so we're going to have four responses available uh, so now we need to set up this blackboard response so go into your blackboard and we need to set a new key and this is going to be a string and that's going to be storing the response the player leaves behind for the question Go back to your tree, click on your ask question task, and make sure your BB response is changed to that new response key that we've set up. Click save, and go back to your ask question. Okay, so on the task we'll need a function, and we need to call this one prepare responses. And what this is going to do is going to prepare the possible answers that the player can choose from onto the screen. Now for this to occur we need to first of all set up the UI widgets that it's going to create. So let's go into our UI editor by going to add new user interface widget blueprint and we're going to go for the question uh, no question we'll go response UI responses UI and we need to make another one called response UI. So we've got responses and response UI. In fact, I'm going to change responses to response list. So it's more obvious which one's which. Okay, so response list is going to be a simple vertical box containing the various responses available to the player. So first of all, get rid of your canvas panel. And then secondly, we want to put in a size box, like so. 
in your size box we want to set the minimum desired width no yeah width to 500 with that set to 500 we're going to rename our size box response list With that set to 500, we're going to put in a border panel. And I'm going to set the colour of that brush to the one we've used before. Which changes to desired. There we go. And in there, we're going to have a vertical box as finally. And that's going to store the list of possible responses that the player may have. So with it selected, go into your details panel and change the name of the vocal box to response list. And you will make it variable. Click compile. And we'll come back to this in a moment. We're now going to go back to the other one we made, the response UI. And this is going to be the individual response. Okay. So I'm going to delete my canvas panel. I'm going to put in a button. And in that button, I'm going to put some text, like so. Okay. Um, so let's just change the look of our button to make it a bit better. Um, so my color and opacity, I'm going to change that to... Uh, oh, no, that's content. Don't do that. Uh, 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 background color, there we go. Just make it see through. Um, <clears throat> and then our text, we want it to, we want to change the name of it. Response text, made that verbal. And go into our graph next. So the variables for this, the first one will be the text to display. And click compile. And we want to bind that text box to that text variable. So go into your text content and bind it to your text variable. So the idea is when we when we spawn in our question and responses those responses will auto uh, fill in and take from that uh, um, dialogue tree what the various responses are. So there's my text. Click compile. And uh, we'll leave this as is. We've got to come back here later to put in the input stuff, but we'll just get displaying first of all. So close that and go into your response list UI. And inside your response list, you want to drag in now your user created option of your response UI. So you want to drag in, drag in four of these to see what it look like. Okay, see if you're happy with it. Now we don't want them actually in here because we're going to spawn them in um, as we create our responses. So we just want to be able to see the options that we have available to us. Okay, so I'm just going to move those. And click compile. Okay, so let's go about actually spawning this stuff. Okay, so we prepare responses. We want to first of all um, create that widget. And we'll choose our response list UI from the, uh, the list. Yeah, compile. With the widget created, we want to store that as a uh, promote to a variable. So I'm going to promote it to a uh, variable, and we'll name it response list UI, and we want to add this to our screen. Now the way we're going to do it is we're going to go into our dialog box uh, over here, and we'll set up an empty panel for it to go into over here. So we want to find a panel that would be suitable for this to go into, so let's put in say uh, a simple, probably the best one to put into, 
Um, let's go for a overlay. So the overlay, we're going to put into the canvas panel here. And we're just going to position it where we want it. So I'm going to position it over here. It doesn't matter too much the size because it's going to expand to the content when we tick the size to content box. Um, the anchor, we want to set in an appropriate position. So I'm going to set it to here. And I want to name this overlay response list panel. Click compile. And what that means is now I can get my dialog UI and access that location. We need to, we need to drag in our um, dialog box reference. So uh, the best place actually for that would be on the event graph. So on the event graph to execute receive execute AI and then from there we're going to get the dialog UI blackboard component get the blackboard value as a object cast that to our dialog box to turn it from a generic object into a specific one and quite specific we can access that um, that panel here. Oh, make sure it is available that we can actually see it. Click compile, and then from there, get the response list panel, and we'll store that as a variable. Actually, no, not, uh, yeah, we can do it as a variable. Actually, it might be better if we just do the whole dialog box as a variable. Dialog. Oh, that went wrong. Dialog box UI. So now we've got a reference to our dialog box. It makes it quicker and easier to get that um, response panel. So get dialog box UI. Get response list panel. And from there, we're going to add a child to overlay. And the content for this will be our responseless UI. Okay, so that now will add that responseless to that panel. Okay, now we've got that, we now need to fill in our, um, where is it? Our response list, actual list. We need to create these for each of those responses we have available to us. So on your ask question task, we need to get a responses array choose get and then from here we're going to do a for each loop okay and for each loop of this response we're going to go for each one of the uh, responses and add a response to our response list okay okay dokie so uh, we're going to go to loop body create widget And we'll choose response UI. Um, oh, open up your response UI. Like so. Go to its graph. And with the text here, make it editable and expose it on spawn. Now, what that allows us to do is we can easily, if I just change this back to none and then reset back to response UI, I can now set the text like so. That way, it sets the text. I don't have to do anything crazy or funky. It just plugs it straight in. So creating a response, a, a multiple choice, and setting that text to the text that we've set up in a response list here. Um, with that, well, then we need to add it to our um, response list in our, in our panel, in this response list UI. So response list UI, drag that out, just get. Um, so that's got a reference to this whole entire thing. We need to get access to this response list. Get to response list. And then we're going to go add child to vertical box. 
plugging that content like so. And now I'll go through each of the responses, adding one per response we've added. So if we only give three responses, it should only add three responses to the UI. Let's click Compile, go back to our event graph. Um, after we've done the Receive Execute AI, just drag in your Prepare Responses function, like so. Click Compile. Now return back to your dialog tree and make sure our Ask Question is set up correctly. We've got that correct, got the response correct, got all this correct. Now let's see how that does now. Okay. Okay, so we've got the question uh, response box showing up, but the question dialog is not showing here. Okay, so what went wrong? In our dialog uh, box, we did not set the... So, in our ask question, we did not set the dialog UIs uh, text like we have with a dialog uh, task uh, display line. So if I go display line, we didn't do this bit. Okay, so we just need to do this bit here on our ask question. So I'm going to put it in between here. So from here, set uh, text. Like so, and drag your question in like that. Click compile, play, and there you go. Here's the question, here's our responses. Okay, so that'll do for this uh, episode. In the next episode, we'll continue with this and make this uh, more interactive and where you can actually choose one. Uh, but thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And a big shout out and thank you to all my supporters thus far uh, for supporting me. Uh, on my journey massive massive thank you to all of you um especially shout out to those at the top tier um you're amazing can't be doing it without you guys so uh keep up the good work and uh, i'll see you guys next time bye bye